directly to the emergency. A Surrey nurse who was working here at Peace Arch Hospital in White Rock is believed to be the first nurse in BC to die from COVID-19. Just ahead, we hear from the woman's husband and the BC Nurses Union about the struggle frontline healthcare workers are facing right now. There's a small memorial here at Almond Park on Vancouver's west side, where a fight between teenagers on Saturday led to the stabbing death of a 15-year-old boy. Just ahead, we hear more about the incident from some people who live in the area. Young people with knives, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's just terrible. Nearly 2,500 people have been diagnosed with COVID-19 since Friday in this province, and another 17 people have passed away from complications due to the virus over the last three days. Dr. Bonnie Henry is now confirming the youngest death from COVID in BC. Tragically, one of those was earlier this year in January. An infant uh, died, uh, an infant from uh, the Interior Health Authority uh, was being treated at BC Children's Hospital and died. And the uh, coroner's investigation, which concluded last week, determined that COVID-19 was indeed a factor in this infant's death. This is, of course, the youngest of uh, death that we have had tragically in our province from COVID-19. 468 people are currently in hospital. 160 of them are in intensive care. Then she had to go on a ventilator. And uh, I, think, I think she knew that wasn't a good thing for her. She knew that, you know, a lot of people, they go on that, they never come off. A Surrey woman is believed to be BC's first nurse to die from complications due to COVID-19. She's being remembered as a devoted patient care coordinator here at Peace Arch Hospital in White Rock. We met in high school. <laughs> so, so we met in 1981. A family is in mourning after Diana Law passed away on April 14th. The 57-year-old nurse spent months in the hospital battling COVID-19. We originally myself and my children thought it was a problem with some of her medication because she had had a kidney transplant about eight years ago. Her family took her to Vancouver General Hospital and shortly after testing positive for COVID-19, she was moved to the ICU. Law lost her battle with the virus just under two weeks ago. The mother of two is being remembered as an attentive nurse who spent her life caring for others. Law's husband of 30 years, Glenn Colshaw, says he's not sure how she contracted the virus, but says he constantly feared for his wife throughout the pandemic while she was working on the front line. I kind of was concerned that she was working in this, but I mean, it's not like she could just not work. You no, know, Diana was a really committed nurse. Uh, she was really caring and very attentive for her patients uh, and highly regarded by her colleagues. Christine Sorensen with the BC Nurses Union was devastated when she heard the news. She says it has hit healthcare workers hard knowing one of their own has died from COVID-19. This death from a, of a colleague will be very difficult for them uh, and and they will continue to do the very best they can to care for their patients, but they're struggling right now. Uh, and we really are at a tipping point in the healthcare system. At Monday's briefing, both Health Minister Adrian Dix and Provincial Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry took a moment to acknowledge the loss. We think of her, I know everyone in healthcare is thinking of her today. It is a tragedy. It is something that affects all of us in the health care system when one of our own passes away. Law's husband says she had just a year left until retirement. Kulsha now worries for their 16-year-old son, who was particularly close to his mom and is taking her death hard. Sorry. He was quite close with his mother. In White Rock, Ashley Burr, City News. Traffic on BC ferries was noticeably down over the weekend, and the company says that's actually a good thing. The province's current rules prevent anyone from traveling between Vancouver Island and the mainland for non-essential reasons. Passenger traffic was down 32% in foot passengers and 25% in vehicles compared to last weekend. The Horseshoe Bay to Lang Langdale run is not only currently on the essentially, or rather, sorry, the Horseshoe Bay to Langdale Run is not currently on the essential travel only list, but customers are still asked to avoid taking it if they can. I was also aware that I could avoid the hotel quarantine if I did cross 
the border via land. As federal leaders call for tighter measures at land borders, one Canadian explains how she walked across the border and avoided a costly hotel quarantine. An 18 year old is in hospital in critical condition after a crash in Abbotsford earlier this morning, and the police watchdog has been called in to investigate. Abbotsford police say they were trying to pull over the car that she was in, but it took off instead. Moments later, it slammed into a cement barrier, Highway 11 and McCallum Road. That stretch of road was closed for some time. It's now reopened. The Independent Investigations Office will look into whether the actions of police played a role in that crash. Oh, my goodness. We've lived here for 20 years. Yeah. Anything like this happened on this side of town before for you? No, nothing, nothing close. A small memorial has marked this tree at Almond Park on Vancouver's west side, where a 15-year-old boy was stabbed during a fight between a group of teenagers on Saturday. On Sunday, the boy died of his injuries. Some of the neighbors in the area saw parts of what happened. Uh, when it happened, I, I was walking out of my house, and I was walking up on the trail, and I just looked down, and I see uh, the police, like, giving this guy CPR. I actually saw, uh, like, uh, I think the guy who, well, you know, stabbed the guy. I saw him getting handcuffed. This is just such a sad waste when you think about it. Some young people with knives, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's just terrible. Vancouver police say the stabbing occurred around 1.30 p.m. Saturday during a conflict between two groups of teenagers. They say the 15-year-old boy was stabbed in the chest and then collapsed. Like I said, I was at a friend's house and she just said some youngster got stabbed in the park and it's very upsetting. Yeah. Generally, it's young families bringing their kids, tennis players. Um, you know, I walk my dog here. As you can imagine, it was uh, quite a chaotic scene in the park. The victim who uh, was stabbed uh, and collapsed uh, in the park was taken to BC Children's Hospital by ambulance. Uh, did undergo some medical procedures at the hospital. However, sadly, did uh, die yesterday afternoon. One charge was laid against a 14-year-old boy. This 14-year-old boy was arrested nearby shortly after uh, we arrived in the park. And this individual has been charged with one count of, a, of possession of a weapon for a dangerous purpose. In a statement, the Vancouver School Board says in part, support including counselors is available to schools impacted by this news, including for staff. Police were cautious not to identify the victim and suspect who are minors and did not say how many teenagers were involved, only that the groups of young people are known to each other. And these are kids whose lives have been uh, drastically changed forever. In the case of the victim who's now died, this is a uh, a teenage boy who's never going to learn to drive, who's never going to go to grad, who's not going to go to college, who's not going to get married. As the homicide investigation continues, police say there is no ongoing danger to those who wish to visit Almond Park. In Vancouver, Kirjunos, City News. Do police have a place in Vancouver's schools? That's the question the Vancouver School Board votes on tonight as it looks at whether or not to continue the school liaison officer program. Critics say they're concerned about the impact of a police presence in schools on BIPOC and LGBTQ students and staff. Supporters say liaison officers will help with crime prevention and break down barriers between law enforcement and those communities. The new Westminster School Board has a final vote tomorrow on abolishing its school liaison officer program after a 6-1 majority backed the move earlier this month. Construction on a section of the Trans Mountain Pipeline has been put on hold after complaints that hummingbird nests and those of other birds were being damaged. Environment and Climate Change Canada ordered the stoppage in an area that runs through a forest in Burnaby over potential threats to migratory bird populations. The department says cutting trees using bulldozers, chainsaws or other heavy machinery in the area must stop until August the 20th after the nesting season. Health Canada updating the label of Janssen's Johnson & Johnson vaccine ahead of it being distributed across the country. The agency says that with reports of cases of rare blood clots in the U.S. happening after immunization, the Janssen product label has been updated with the signs and symptoms of possible side effects and when to seek medical attention. They say the reports of rare blood clots are similar to those reported after the AstraZeneca vaccine. 
Health Canada believes the benefits of vaccination outweigh what they say are very rare potential risks and supports the use of both Janssen and AstraZeneca. Canada is set to get its very first shipment of single dose shots from Johnson & Johnson this week. Once you get to the border, you're met with a customs officer who just kind of goes over your information and then sends you to go get a test, get the test, and then you're on your way. Federal opposition leaders say Canada's land border needs reinforcement and are demanding new efforts to stop COVID. But one Canadian traveler tells City News crossing the border by land is simple but thorough. They are pretty strict compared to other borders that I have crossed. Um, and I think um, I think the hotel quarantine is definitely um, pretty rigorous. I don't know if it's necessarily um, needed, but I mean, asking for everyone to provide a negative test seems to be fair at this point. Christine Spaniolo says she had to submit a negative test at the border, take another at the border, and has since had a third test while quarantining at home, all three negative. The Toronto woman says she crossed by land, knowing she could avoid a costly hotel quarantine that way. I was aware that flying through Toronto would require hotel quarantine um, and I was also aware that I could avoid the hotel quarantine if I did cross the border via land. Spaniolo isn't alone. Cab companies in New York State say they're doing a brisk business taxiing Canadians across the border. Nazreen Akhtar owns Aero Transportation in Niagara Falls. She says her drivers bring about four or five families a day across the border. Some families they have uh, their family members meet them at the border, like at a coffee shop in, in, in Canada, like on the Canadian side at a Tim Hortons or something. Others, um, depending on family structure, we're taking them all the way to Brampton. We're taking them to Vaughan. Now, opposition leader Aaron O'Toole says his party will be pushing for changes at the border, but didn't outline what new measures the Conservatives might propose. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News.